in their birch bark canoe to Portage Rock in the Elbow Lake. They are coming from Net Lake, which is uh, about uh, 25 miles west of Elbow, and they cross uh, come from Net Lake to uh, Pelican Lake, cross that in their canoes and go down the Pelican River, which runs out of Pelican Lake, until they get to a farm called the Geen, G-H-E-E-N farm, where the Elbow River empties into the uh, Pelican River. Then they go up the Pelican River and eventually get into, uh, uh, excuse me, go up the Elbow River and eventually get into Elbow Lake. Uh, the reason they come to uh, here is to get into Susan Lake, which is across the bridge. And uh, you notice the emptying water out of it. <coughs> and. Uh, the uh, rice in Susan is so much was so much superior to rice in other lakes for some reason. It had longer grain, and uh, the Indians felt it was much uh, better. Uh, now uh, they'll uh, get ready to cross the portage, and uh, one of the women will turn her canoe over. She had a leak in it, which is the one here, and so she will be repairing it with her uh, pine pitch. All those seams are pine pitch. There she is checking to see where the hole is. And uh, they'll have a little fire, and then she'll take a little curl of birch bark and hold it next to the to the uh, pitch seam and soften it up enough so she can punch it in further. That's the way she's doing it there now. The <coughs> <laughs> anyway, she's quite an actor. She wets her thumb to handle the pitch so she won't get burned. This girl had some little puppies for sale. We did buy them. Uh, might have been interesting. I don't know. At that time, we were not into dogs. But they're starting across the portage now. And... Uh, these portages are uh, connected with the uh, border lakes between the U.S. and Canada, and so Canadians are forever allowed to come through here without passports or any other thing. And <clears throat> so it's a, it's a historic portage. <clears throat> the kids are carrying a little load of wood. Uh, okay, we'll show them. Uh, here's the collecting the rice. Now you can see the rice is quite thick. In his front is doing the paddling. The man behind has a stick, two sticks, and he holds the rice heads over the canoe and hits it with the other stick, and that knocks off the ripe rice. <clears throat> Wild rice does what's called shattering. That is, it doesn't all ripen at once. So uh, they can... Uh, do this, and they could come back again and do it in a week or two. Um, anyway, they keep doing this till they get the canoe almost full. Then they'll pull it on shore and go ahead and process it. Um, much of the rice in Susan used to be so thick that you often had to cut a way through in order to get a boat through, and the stems would get as big as your thumb in some cases. Very luxuriant rice. You can see how heavy the heads are there. He's holding up some of the rice to show you. Now they get the rice on shore, then they build a fire and have the, put the tubs on it and dump the green rice in, and the lady stirs it up well to get the uh, chaff separated. And you see in the background he's uh, trying to uh, get the 
except he's got a big birch bark basket. And they stand out towards the point where there's a little wind and and do it. Now he is uh, taking the uh, rice and he's got it in kind of a barrel with a rawhide lining and he wears special uh, moose uh, hide uh, moccasins to insulate his feet a little from the heat. And so he tramples out the rice and gets all the <coughs> husk uh, loose and then they'll dump it in one of their birch bark baskets and she'll take it out here where the wind will carry the chaff away and uh, hopefully end up with just the clean rice. You notice the basket has a kind of a lip on it. You see the wind is carrying the chaff off there. And the low side is where the chaff is supposed to come off. And they were camped here for several days and processing their rice before they went back to Net Lake again. Net Lake is a reservation. <coughs>